Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and today we're going to finish up our discussion on trigonometric functions of angles. So in the previous video, we talked about how to find the function values for the six trigonometric functions of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, and also their equivalent in terms of radian measure, which will be pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians. We also found and used the reference angles to evaluate trigonometric functions. In this video, we're going to talk about how to recognize and use fundamental trigonometric identities, express a trigonometric function in terms of another, and also determine the area of an acute or obtuse triangle using the sine function. So let's talk about trigonometric identities. Trigonometric functions of angles are related to each other through several important equations called trigonometric identities. We've already encountered some of these trigonometric identities involving trigonometric functions defined for a real number t. The following identities involve the trigonometric functions defined for any angle theta. So the theorem, fundamental identities, the reciprocal identities are those that we've already previously studied, and they're as follows. The cosecant function is a reciprocal of the sine function. So that means cosecant of theta is equal to 1 divided by sine of theta. The secant function and cosecant cosine function are reciprocals of one another, so secant of theta is equal to 1 divided by cosine of theta. Cotangent and tangent functions are reciprocals of one another, so it means cotangent of theta is equal to 1 divided by tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is the ratio of sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, and cotangent of theta is the reciprocal, which would be cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. We also have seen the following Pythagorean identities, which are frequently used throughout trigonometry and calculus. So sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of the same angle theta must equal 1, and this is called Pythagorean identity. However, if you take sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1, and you divide all the terms by cosine squared of theta on both sides of the equation, you'll have sine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta, so if you take the first term and divide by cosine squared of theta, plus the second term divided by cosine squared of theta, which would be cosine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta, is equal to the right side of the equation, 1 divided by cosine squared of theta. So if you simplify the left side of the equation, notice that you have sine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta, that's sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, and the whole expression is being squared. So sine of theta divided by cosine of theta is tangent of theta. So the first term becomes tangent squared of theta plus Cosine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta will give you 1. And then the right side of the equation, you'll have 1 divided by cosine squared of theta. Well, 1 divided by cosine of theta is secant of theta, so you'll have secant squared of theta on the right side of the equation. So this is also a Pythagorean identity. Tangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared of theta. That's if you take sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1, and you divide all the terms by cosine squared of theta. However, let's say you divide all the terms of sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1 by sine squared of theta this time. Then you'll have sine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta for the first term. That will give you 1 plus cosine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta. Notice you have cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. That's cotangent of theta. But then since it's cosine squared in the numerator and sine squared in the denominator, you'll have cotangent squared of theta. So on the left side of the equation, you'll have 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals... On the right side of the equation, you have 1 divided by sine squared of theta. That is 1 divided by sine of theta. That's cosecant of theta. And since it's squared, you'll have cosecant squared of theta on the right side of the equation. And so this also gives you a Pythagorean identity. 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta. So these three identities are called Pythagorean identities. So in example 4, we're going to express one function in terms of another. Use the Pythagorean theorem, or Pythagorean identity, to express one trigonometric function in terms of another trigonometric function. Number 1. Express the sine function in terms of cosine. So since we know that the sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1, that gives us a relationship between sine and cosine. So we can start with that expression. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. If we take this equation, or this identity, and we solve for sine of theta, then we'll have the following. Sine squared of theta, if you isolate that on one side of the equation, you'll have 1 subtract cosine squared of theta after you subtract cosine squared to the right side of the equation. And now, if you want to get sine of theta, you need to take the square root on both sides of the equation because you want to cancel out the square power on the sine function. And so if you take the square root on the left side of the equation, square root of sine squared of theta is equal to, make sure that you have a plus or minus because you're using a square root to cancel out a square power. And so you have plus or minus square root of the right side of the equation, 1 subtract cosine squared of theta. And so the left side of the equation becomes sine of theta after the square root and the square cancel out. And so you'll have plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine squared of theta. Now notice, the square root of 1 minus cosine squared of theta is not equal to 1 minus cosine of theta. And so this is completely simplified. It'll be square root of 1 subtract cosine squared of theta. So that expresses the sine function in terms of the cosine function. Sine is plus or minus the square root of 1 subtract cosine squared of theta. Now in part 2, we're going to use the result from part 1 to help us. Part 2, express the tangent function in terms of the sine function where the reference angle theta is in quadrant 2. So remember, the tangent function is the ratio of the sine function of theta divided by the cosine function of theta. Well, now we want to figure out what can we replace sine of theta or cosine of theta in terms of? Well, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. 
Well, notice we want to rewrite the tangent function in terms of the sine function. So we need to replace this cosine function to also be in terms of sine functions. So let's use Pythagorean identity again. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. This is a relationship between the sine function and the cosine function. If we take this equation and solve for cosine of theta this time, rather than sine of theta, we'll have to get cosine of theta by itself on one side of the equation. So subtract sine squared to the right side of the equation. So you have cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 subtract sine squared of theta. And if you take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power on the cosine function, you'll have the square root of cosine squared of theta is equal to, again, remember the plus or minus, square root of the right side of the equation, which will be square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta. And so the left side of the equation becomes cosine of theta after the square root and square cancels each other out. So cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 to track sine squared of theta. This is completely simplified. Now we want to figure out, is it plus the square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta, or is it negative square root 1 minus sine squared of theta? Well, notice that theta is in quadrant 2. If it's in quadrant 2, the cosine function is negative. So cosine of theta is the opposite of square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta, because the cosine function is negative because theta is in quadrant 2. And so we can replace the denominator, cosine of theta, with the opposite of square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta. So we have tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta in the numerator, divided by cosine of theta is replaced with the opposite of square root 1 minus sine squared of theta. This is another way to express the tangent function in terms of the sine function if the theta is in quadrant 2. So example 5, we're going to evaluate a trigonometric function. Given the value of the tangent function and the sine of the value of the cosine function, find the exact value of each of the remaining five trigonometric functions. So tangent of theta will be 2 thirds, and cosine of theta is positive in this case. So again, remember, if tangent of theta is equal to 2 thirds, this does not mean that the numerator, sine of theta, is not equal to 2, and cosine of theta is not the denominator, it's not equal to 3. You have to realize that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta must still equal 1. So if sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta, if we say the numerator is 2, which is sine of theta, then you would have 2 squared. If you say the denominator cosine of theta is 3, then you would have 3 squared for cosine squared. Well, 2 squared plus 3 squared will give you 4 plus 9, which is 13. That does not satisfy the Pythagorean identity, which said that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta must equal 1. So we need to approach this a different way. We know that the tangent function of theta is 2 thirds. We automatically know the cotangent function because the cotangent function of theta is the reciprocal of tangent of theta. So cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of 2 thirds or 3 halves. So cotangent of theta is 3 halves. So now we have four more trigonometric functions to identify. We have the tangent function and the cotangent function. Let's find out what is the secant function next. Let's use a Pythagorean identity because there is a relationship between the tangent function and the secant function. Tangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared of theta using a Pythagorean identity. Well, if we replace tangent of theta with 2 thirds, then we would have on the left side of the equation 2 thirds squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared of theta. Well, 2 thirds squared gives you 4 ninths, so 4 ninths plus 1 on the left side of the equation is equal to secant squared of theta. Well, that means you have 13 ninths is equal to secant squared of theta. And so if you want secant of theta, take the square root on both sides of the equation. So secant of theta is equal to plus or minus square root of 13 ninths. And if you take the square root of a fraction, you can take the square root of the numerator, which will be square root of 13, and the square root of the denominator, which is square root of 9, which will simplify just the 3. So you have plus or minus square root of 13 in the numerator divided by 3. Well, since the cosine function is positive, that means the secant function is also positive at theta. And so cosine of theta is positive. That means secant of theta will be positive square root 13 divided by 3. And again, remember that the cosine function of theta is the reciprocal of the secant function of theta. So cosine of theta will be the reciprocal 3 divided by square root 13 because it's the reciprocal of the secant function. And now if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root 13 divided by square root 13, cosine of theta will be 3 square root 13 all over 13. So now we have tangent, cotangent, cosine, and secant. We still have to find out what is the value of the sine function of theta and the cosecant function of theta. So let's start with tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is equal to 2 thirds. That is equal to the ratio of sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. Well, that doesn't mean that sine of theta is 2 and cosine of theta is 3. It just means that if you divide sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, you'll get a fraction that simplifies to 2 thirds. So let's find out what is the fraction if we know the cosine function is 3 squared 13 divided by 13. So let's make that replacement in the denominator. So you have 2 thirds on the left side of the equation is equal to sine of theta in the numerator. And then the cosine of theta will be replaced with 3 squared 13 divided by 13. So if you multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator, you can isolate sine of theta on one side of the equation. So sine of theta will be equal to 2 thirds times the denominator, 3 squared 13 divided by 13. And notice that the 3's will cancel out the coefficients. 
You have multiplication by 3 and also division by 3, so they'll cancel out. So you'll have sine of theta is equal to 2 times square root 13 in the numerator and divided by 13 in the denominator. And again, if the sine function of theta is equal to 2 squared 13 divided by 13, and the cosecant function of theta is the reciprocal of the sine function of theta, then the cosecant function of theta will be 13 divided by 2 squared 13. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by squared 13 divided by squared 13, then you'll have 13 squared 13 in the numerator, and the denominator will be 2 times 13. And so the 13s will cancel out, and you'll have squared 13 divided by 2. That is the value of the cosecant function of theta. So to summarize, we were given the tangent function of theta was equal to 2 thirds, and the cosine function of theta was positive. We found out the cotangent function of theta was 3 halves, the reciprocal of the tangent function. We used the Pythagorean identity to find out what is the value of secant, since we knew the value of tangent. Secant of theta came out to be square root 13 divided by 3. We knew that cosine of theta is the reciprocal of secant, so cosine of theta is 3 square root 13 divided by 13. And then we used the identity tangent of theta with sine of theta divided by cosine of theta to help us find out what is the value of sine of theta. It came out to be 2 squared 13 divided by 13. And then we knew the cosecant of theta was the reciprocal of the sine function. And so cosecant of theta turned out to be squared 13 divided by 2. So we have the value of all six trigonometric functions. So example six, so let's try a similar problem. Evaluating trigonometric functions. Given the value of the secant function and the sine of the value of the sine function, find the exact value for each of the remaining five trigonometric functions. So again, this time we're given secant of theta is equal to two, and this time the sine of theta is a positive value. So if secant of theta is equal to two, we automatically know that the reciprocal function, the cosine function, will be the reciprocal of two, which is one half. So the cosine of theta is equal to one half. So we have four more trigonometric functions to find out. We have to find out what is the sine function, the cosecant function, the cotangent function, and the tangent function. So notice that the sine function was positive. If the cosine function is positive one half, the cosine of theta is a positive number. So sine of theta is positive and cosine of theta is positive. That means that the angle must be in quadrant one because both the sine function and the cosine function are both positive in quadrant one. So now let's find out what is the value of the cosine function using the Pythagorean identity sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta is equal to one since we know the value of the sine function of theta. Since we know the value of cosine of theta is equal to one half, we can make that replacement for cosine squared of theta will be become one half all squared for cosine squared of theta. So we'll have sine squared of theta plus one fourth equals one. And so if you subtract one fourth to the right side of the equation, you'll have sine squared of theta is equal to one subtract one fourth, which is equal to three fourths. And if you take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power, you'll have sine of theta is equal to plus or minus square root of three fourths. And if you take the square root of the fraction, it'll be square root of three in the numerator and square root of four in the denominator, which simplifies to just two. So sine of theta is plus or minus square root of three divided by two. But we know that the sine function was positive. That was given to us in the problem. So sine of theta will be positive square root three divided by two. So now that we know the sine function of theta is square root three divided by two, we know the cosecant function is the reciprocal of the sine function. So cosecant of theta will be the reciprocal. It will be two divided by square root three. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root three divided by square root three, you have two square root three divided by three for the value of the cosecant function of theta. So now we can find the value of the tangent function of theta. Tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. We just found out the sine function of theta was square root three divided by two, and we were given the cosine function was equal to one half because that was the reciprocal of the secant function, which was two. We have sine of theta, which is square root three divided by two in the numerator, divided by cosine of theta, which is equal to one half in the denominator. So you have square root three divided by two times two divided by one after you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So square root three divided by two times two over one, the twos will cancel out because you're multiplying and dividing by two. And so you have square root three. That's the value of the tangent function of theta. And now to find the last trigonometric function, cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent function of theta. And so cotangent of theta will be the reciprocal. It'll be one divided by square root three. And so if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root three divided by square root three, cotangent of theta will be square root three divided by three. And so we have found the remaining five trigonometric functions. Secant of theta was two, cosine of theta was one half. We found out the sine function by using the Pythagorean identity, using sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one. We found out that sine of theta was square root three divided by two, which told us the cosecant function of theta was two square root three divided by three using the reciprocal identity. And then we found out the tangent function was equal to square root three using the identity for tangent was sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. And then cotangent of theta was reciprocal of the tangent function, which turned out to be square root three divided by three. So let's finish up this video by talking about areas of triangles. We're gonna finish the section with an application of the trigonometric functions that involve angles that are not necessarily acute. So recall that the formula for area of a triangle is as follows. Its area is equal to one half times base times height. 
Well, if you know two sides and an included angle of the triangle, then you can find the height of the triangle using trigonometric functions and then find out the value of the area of the triangle. So in other words, if theta is an acute angle, the height of the triangle is given by the following formula. If A is equal to 1 half times base times height, let's find out a formula for the base and also a formula for the height of this triangle in terms of trigonometric functions. So let's say we have a triangle where the angle theta is an acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So the height of the triangle or called the altitude of the triangle would be the opposite side from this angle theta in terms of this right triangle. So if we call A the base of the entire triangle, and B is the hypotenuse of this side that's opposite the right angle, then we actually can find out what is the formula for the height and also the base using trigonometric functions. So the opposite side of theta is H, which is the height, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is B. So let's use the sine function of theta. So sine of theta would be opposite side, which would be H, divided by hypotenuse, which is B. So sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse, which will be H divided by B. If you multiply both sides of the equation by B to clear the denominator, you'll have H on one side of the equation now. So H is equal to B times sine of theta. And so that means the height of the triangle is B times sine of theta. And the base of the triangle was given as the length A. And so the formula for the area of the triangle would be 1 half times base times height. That would be 1 half times base, which is A, times height, which was B times sine of theta. So the area would be 1 half times A times B times sine of theta. Now let's say theta is not an acute angle, it's an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90 degrees or greater than pi over 2 radians. So if angle theta is not acute, we can see that the height of the triangle is again, it will be H if you represent the obtuse angle as theta, then the height of the triangle will be H and the base of the triangle will still be A, then the height of the triangle will be B times sine of 180 degrees subtract theta, which would be B times sine of theta. This is because the reference angle of theta is the angle 180 degrees subtract theta. It's this angle here, is the reference angle, which means that the area formula is given as follows. It will be A equals 1 half times base times height, which is equal to 1 half times the base, we're calling the base length A, times the height, which would be B times sine of theta. And so the area of the obtuse triangle would also be the same formula. It would be 1 half times A times B times sine of theta. Therefore, we have a formula to find the area of the triangle that is in defined in terms of the sine function of the included angle. So the theorem says area of a triangle, the area A of a triangle with sides of length A and length B and with an included angle theta is as follows. It's A equals 1 half times base times height or 1 half times A times B times sine of theta. So let's use this formula in terms of this last example. Example 7, finding the area of a triangle. Find the area of a triangle given by the following information. Note that the figure below is not drawn to scale. So this triangle has a base of 10 centimeters, it has a side of 3 centimeters, and it has an obtuse angle 120 degrees included in the triangle. So the base of the triangle is equal to A, that's A equals 10 centimeters. The height of the triangle will be labeled as H, H is equal to B times sine of theta. Well, B was included as 3 centimeters, so it will be 3 times sine of the included angle theta, which is 120 degrees. So it will be 3 times sine of 120 degrees. And recall that sine of 120 degrees is equal to square root 3 divided by 2. So you have 3 times square root 3 in the numerator and divide by 2 in the denominator. So 3 square root 3 divided by 2 centimeters is the height of the triangle. And so now we can find out what is the area of the triangle, now that we know the base and the height. The formula for area of a triangle is A equals 1 half times A times B times sine of theta. So the area of the triangle is equal to 1 half times lowercase a, which was 10 centimeters, times the height of the triangle, which was 3 square root 3 divided by 2 centimeters. So if you take 1 half times 10 centimeters times 3 square root 3 divided by 2 centimeters, you'll find out the area of this triangle is approximately 12.9903 square centimeters, or centimeters squared. Or if you round the two decimal places, it'll be 12.99 square centimeters for the area of this triangle. So this finishes our video on using fundamental identities to evaluate trigonometric functions. We talked about how to recognize and use fundamental trigonometric identities. We also express a trigonometric function in terms of another, and we also determine the area of an acute or an obtuse triangle using the sine function. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about inverse trigonometric functions and right triangles.